All right, what's up fellow nerds? It's Dr. Paul, little tutorial video. Uh, if you watched the earlier video in the series, you know that I have Journey into Mystery Annual Number no. 1 from 1965, first appearance of Zeus and Hercules. Um, this is an extra copy that I have of the uh, US edition. It has some pressable and cleanable defects, and uh, I'm gonna work on those today. I'm going to be working through my um, magnifying lamp for some of it, but I will move it aside for some of it. The first thing I'm going to do is just take this cotton round, run it gently over the book, and um, see if there's any major debris that this will pick up, or if there's anything on the surface of the book that I will feel while I'm dragging this over. And I do feel something right here. You see there's a little bit of discoloration. I have something on the surface of the book. So I'm going to take, this is a um, tool for electronics, but it's similar to a dental pick. It's got a little chisel. And I'm very gently pushing that chisel across the paper to see if it wants to catch on anything. That's all I'm doing here. If it does want to catch on something and pop it off, that's great. If it doesn't, then I'm going to leave it for now and we'll deal with it later. does feel like something's physically on top of the paper right there and it also feels like it doesn't want to pop off with this so I think we'll probably come at that with a little bit of moisture and see what happens so we know we have an issue right there and we found that frankly because we're gently cleaning with this cotton round also notice that I'm in the center of the book. I'm supporting the book. I'm going toward the edges. Now, when we do this, we may break off some of these little pieces on this edge. Um, if it happens, it happens. It's sort of like Ivan Drago regarding Apollo Creed. If he dies, he dies. Um, these are barely held on anyway. See how brittle they are? We can't really effectively clean this without losing some of those. And I think that having a little bit of that loss um, is an acceptable trade-off for having the book cleaner. Um, so I'm going to proceed cautiously, knowing that we've already lost a few little flakes and we're likely to lose more. Okay. Um, I think the camera probably can pick that up. There's a little bit of dirt that's come off that. And we found a flaw here that we did not see on our um, casual inspection. When you're doing this, especially around these staples, you want to make sure you're not pushing really hard because you can create indentations around the square bound book, around the staples. More dirt on this side for sure. And more small amounts of paper loss. Okay. I think that's about all we're going to benefit from with a, um, with a dry cotton round. Now we could start immediately on dry cleaning with erasers, but I sort of want to see what's going on here. And so I'm going to put a little bit of water on a cotton round 
and uh, I'm going to very gently go at that. So I've just distilled water in a mister. I have a cotton round. I'm going to spray it just off screen because I don't want to spray it directly on the book. So I've just sprayed a little bit onto this surface. I'm going to fold it. So this is damp now. I'm going to just put some of that dampness here. And I'm going to drag it gently. It does look like we're pulling a little bit of that up. Yeah, in fact, there we go. It just needed a little bit of dampness. So what was on the surface there, we don't know. But it's now no longer on the surface of the book. It's here on our pad. Okay? So there's one problem solved. Now, we start to dry clean this. We need to avoid this area here because that paper's damp and um, wet paper is weak paper. Um, <clears throat> the main tools here are a Stadler white eraser and a Pentel white eraser. Most of my contemporaries prefer this Stadler, but in my hands, this will degloss a book more aggressively than the Pentel will. I prefer to do most of my work with the Pentel, especially on books that still have nice glossy covers like this one does. So I'm gonna be mostly working with this one. Um, I have cut the eraser at a bit of an angle, a la Kenny Sanderson. And um, you'll notice that a lot of cleaners do that. That's where I learned it from. I don't know where he learned it from or he came up with it himself, but um, that just makes it a lot better to get inside areas like this. Now, um, we know that this paper is, at least along that top edge, it's actually brittle. So we are going to be extremely delicate with this cleaning. I'm going to leave a fair amount of the eraser out so you can tell it's basically floppy. Well, I got a little bit of a cut there, but it's basically floppy. And that basically stops me actually from putting a lot of pressure into the erasing, right? And so that'll protect the paper in its own way. And it, it sort of forces you to slow down a bit. So that's a method you can use if you have a very weak paper. And I don't know that we have universally weak paper here. Yeah, see what I mentioned, I have. You put it out too far, you create a stress riser right around this edge and you, um, you can get that happening. So no, no worries. I guess that's an opportunity to show you um, how I cut this. So I have a scalpel um, with a number 11 blade. And I just have this because um, I work in, I finished my PhD in, um, in a lab where I did um, animal research. And as part of the animal research, I did some surgeries. And so I have a full surgical kit. So I'm familiar with those tools and comfortable with them. And um, that's why I use them. It's not necessarily to say that that's the best way to do that. I just happen to have that around. Um, and I prefer that because I'm more comfortable with it to an X-Acto knife, for example. So, ordinarily I start along the edges and work around so that I have kind of a systematic approach. Um, you see right here, I'm already started off just somewhat haphazardly. And um, that's okay as long as you get everything done. I do think it is better to kind of have a game plan start somewhere, but um, I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera, so I'm sort of taking a bit of a different approach than I normally do to this, than I normally would to this book, and um, that means I'm approaching it a little bit haphazardly in terms of 
not having a um, place to start and then, you know, sort of rastering back and forth like you're mowing the lawn or whatever. Um, you don't obviously need to do that. And so today we're not going to because we're going to maximize the ability uh, to catch this on camera. All right, so you can see this is pretty effectively cleaned. The paper does have some yellowing, but the soiling is largely gone. We'll go back over a few areas where it looks like there's still a little bit of soiling. You've seen other cleaners. You, you know that you can use erasers sparingly on color. Um, and I do that. And it depends a bit on the era of the book as well. Um, but I tend not to start with the idea that I'm going to be using the eraser on any of the colored areas. So I tend to start just with the whites. Now I'm going to not go down this line because we know it's a little bit wet right here from that wet cleaning we did. So I'm going to focus my energy over here. And we'll go out this line all the way to the edge of the book. When you get close to the edge, you want to make sure you're only going one direction like this. Because if you go that way and come back, you can pull that edge up. We do not want that. I tend to have natural, um, you know, turn of my wrist in this direction. So I will typically move the book around so that I am always able to keep that natural movement rather than have my hands like this while I'm trying to work. This is just kind of a little bit of ergonomics that will help you be able to work for longer periods without getting um, pain or discomfort. I'm gonna get in very tight right here. There's a little bit of white in this panel. And I'm just going to, there's a little bit of soiling there. I'm going to be very gentle here because I think we could take up this yellow for the ghost Thor quite easily. We could also take up this blue on these little clouds quite easily. So we just, we're very gentle in that area. All right, so I think we've got this quadrant here. We skipped that on purpose. We've got all this area and we'll start working up in here. And we'll just work our way across the uh, cover in this fashion until we have all of the soiling that we can see cleaned up. So I think what I'll do is I'll be quiet now so that we can do this on um, <clears throat> time lapse and kind of speed it up without having a, some kind of chipmunk's voice over it. And um, when I get to something interesting, um, I'll discuss it so that we could slow the video back down there.
All right, <clears throat> there you have it. I think um, we, we did a pretty good job on the front cover. This is a lot cleaner than it was when we started. It presents better. Um, we do have some yellowing here, which we could address. Um, we got an actual accretion that was on top of the book off there. There's a little bit of staining associated with that. Um, we can clean this cover a little bit um, in the colored areas if we want to. Um, but every time you do that, you do take a little bit of ink. And I don't see enough soiling that it really detracts from any of the colored areas. So I will tend not to do anything other than the gentle wipe we did with the cotton round to start. Unless I see so much soiling that, you know, like you can see it in the lighter colors, then we decide that, you know, we may want to go after the, the book more globally. Um, I also noticed when I was working here, there's actually a line that, that I can see, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, where the paper is really brittle. It almost looks like maybe just that edge got wet or just that edge had some UV exposure, something like that. Um, you can see in my shavings that we did lose. Some of these are little pieces of the cover. And again, we knew that would happen. Look, they were brittle. They really, you know, they would have fallen off even just going in a bag and a board. There's a bit of overhang here on the paper as well, which contributed. Um, it's actually probably the main contributor because that paper there got exposed to oxygen from both sides and it's just, um, it's just that very, very edge that's brittle. The rest of the paper is actually in pretty good shape and that's, that's nice to know. Um, if we decide to do some additional wet cleaning or some photo bleaching or something else, it's nice to start off with some healthy paper. Okay, so... I will continue that same process. I will clean the spine and I will clean the back. And I think that that's quite tedious and probably not that interesting for you to watch. So I will do that off camera and then we'll come back with um, some results and maybe next steps. All right. Enjoy the hunt. Take care of one another.